Well, here we are at the, in the first Sunday, the first Sunday of 2021. Finally. Finally. Even though each year only has 365 days, except for those fourth years, we won't talk about that. Even though there's only 365 days in a year, it seems that this past year has been much, much longer than that uh, for many of us. But we are finally here. We are finally uh, to a new year. And as we do that, I, I do often, as I prayed just a moment ago, I do often reflect on the past year and look for ways that God has moved and look for things that God has either taught us or, or at least tried to teach us if we were paying attention. I looked back as I prepared for our time together this morning, I looked back to the first Sunday of 2020. And I challenged us at that point in time to make 2020, some of you may remember this, but I'm not counting on that because I didn't until I looked back, but I challenged us that first Sunday of 2020 to make 2020 the year of obedience. The year of obedience. As I've reflected on that in my own life and in the life of our church and the life of, 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 of our, our family, I've asked my Self the question, has that really been our reality? Has it been a year of obedience? Obedi obedience is not really that difficult as long as things are going our way. Obedience becomes difficult and becomes work and a struggle when things aren't going our way. And I don't know about you, but most things that I've seen and most things that I've experienced is very little in 2020 went our way, went the way that we would want. We've talked about this idea of, of plans and how things had to change and how we had to, to transition. And really the word in, in, at least in church life, has been pivot. How do we pivot? How do we, how do we move to this next era? How do we how do we as a church try to minister and to, to love well in, in this new environment and, and all of these different things? So obedience has, while it was challenged in, in the beginning of 2020, I'm not positive, at least in my own life, and you need to answer that for yourself, but has this been the year of obedience for you? And honestly, in many ways it has, because as I look at our family and I look at what God has done, even through the struggles, our church has stayed, our family has stayed connected. I think, in, and maybe I pray in the best way that we could, I, I, we could always do better, but, but I've been so blessed by how our family has continued to love well and to, to respond well to one another and stay engaged. We, we haven't done everything perfectly, I understand that, but, but I am so blessed and thankful to God and to you for the way that you have responded and stayed connected uh, even in the midst of struggle. So in that sense, I can see where we have truly lived out that idea of a, a year of obedience. But I want to go deeper than that, and I want to ask the question, have we been obedient to truly seek God in everything? Or have we become distracted with other things? I think any, even in, a, in our best years, we become distracted by, by other things, by different desires, different fears maybe, different concerns. Life has a way of pulling at us, pulling us away. Life has a way of depleting our passion for our first love. I said this somewhat last week, but I want to encourage us as we think towards this new year not to, to look for I hope this changes, or I hope the pandemic is gone, or, or I hope that, that our country comes together. All of those things are, are a reality that we need to pray for. But I think the best way that we could hope and pray and move toward 2021 being different is in our relationship with Jesus Christ. Because I believe that if our relationship with Him is where it should be, all these other things will take care of themselves. In fact, Jesus said that. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these other things will be added. So I believe that in 
2020, we made it the year of obedience. This year, I think 2021 needs to be the year of spiritual renewal, uh, of regaining that original passion, that first love. I would encourage us to think along those lines of 2021 being the year that we grow our relationship with Christ, because that's really all that matters. How will we move forward and go deeper in our relationship with Jesus? William Faulkner said that we should not look to monuments, but rather to footprints. He said, a monument only says, at least I got this far, while a footprint says, this is where I was when I moved again. We need to look at this year as being moving forward, a time to go deeper, a time to move closer to God. Over the month of January, we'll be looking at a series titled Main Things, getting back to those basic things of, of Bible study and prayer and worship. We need to push the reset button. We need to desire a renewed passion. Do you remember that that feeling that you had when you first accepted Christ, when, when things were exciting and you wanted to change the world, you wanted to do everything that you could to honor God with your life and, and everything about, about what you were doing and, and it was just an exciting time. Does anybody remember that? I'm not gonna ask you to respond, but, but do you still have that same passion? Many of us do. It comes and goes, I understand. But I will tell you that it is not uncommon, and I'm not trying to make us feel guilty, I'm trying to open our eyes to the fact that it is easy for us to drift and not have that same passion. And so I challenge us, me included, starting with me, I challenge us to seek God desperately and to, to want that same passion that we felt, that same excitement for following Jesus this year that we felt possibly when we first gave our life to Him. Sometimes we have to get back to where we started in order to know how to move forward. We can't control our world. That has become very obvious in 2020. If we haven't learned anything else in 2020, we should have learned that we can't control our lives. We can't control our world. But we can do our part to focus on what really matters, and that is drawing closer to God, drawing closer to Jesus. Our text this morning, I want us to, I know that we've probably, many of you have even memorized this, and I know you've heard it before and you've read it, but our text is Psalm 42, one through two. As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? Do you hear the desperation? Do you hear the passion, the excitement of the psalmist? comparing himself to a deer in the way that that deer, after uh, either being pursued or, or, or running, is desperate for water, pants for water. His desire is that God would fulfill him, God would renew him, God would allow him to become close to him. As I've read this and thought about it and prayed through it and meditated on it, I, I want us to have that same kind of passion. I want that same kind of passion, that desperate realization of a desperate need that, that we have to have God. We can't live without Him. We do have a desperate need. At the core of who we are rests an awareness of a desperate need, a self-awareness of utter dependence. The problem is we would rather acknowledge, rather than acknowledge this dependency, we often drown out that awareness with distraction. We allow our pride and our desire for independence to mask our need and we, we sometimes even medicate that need with things that will never truly satisfy instead of simply turning to the one that understands what we truly need better than we do for ourselves. The psalmist says, our soul pants more for God. 
He says that this, just as the deer pants for streams of water, my soul pants for you, my God. The pressures of life are relentless, especially this past 10 months. When we reach the end of our line, we come face to face with our spiritual lack. We have learned that over the last 10 months, this, this need, our innermost, deepest need. Maybe you have not reached that point, or maybe you have and you don't understand what it truly means or, or how to interpret it. This feeling of helplessness, this feeling of, of not knowing how to take a next step. I would suggest to you that that place, when you have that realization, that place is a realization that you are completely dependent on God and there's nothing else you can do about it. Then we reach that point, like the psalmist, that our hearts ache for God. We thirst for more of Him. Spurgeon uh, was a, a wonderful preacher in England in the 1800s. He said this about this particular passage. He said, talking about the psalmist, ease he did not seek, honor he did not covet, but the enjoyment of communion with God was an urgent need of his soul. He viewed it not merely as the sweetest of all luxuries, but as an absolute necessity, like water to a stag. We have this desperate need. We sometimes don't know how to interpret it. We interpret it in different ways, but it is a helplessness that we come face to face with and realize that God is the only one that satisfies. More crucial to our survival than air and water is our need for Jesus. We need to realize that. This past 10 months, this past year has taught us, surely has taught us that we have an utter dependence on Him. That's good if we've learned that lesson because the next lesson we can learn is that only God truly satisfies and He does. Jesus came to offer us life to the fullest, to offer us peace. He is the Prince of Peace. He alone can calm our fears. He alone can bring peace in the midst of difficulty. He alone walks with us and provides for us. Psalm 46 says, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, the psalmist says, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam the foam and the mountains quake with their surging. God is our refuge. God is our strength. He is our ever-present help in times of trouble. This past year has been a time of trouble, but God is our ever-present help in those times. God is our provider and our provision. He he and only He can satisfy our deepest needs. That need, as I said, when we reach the end of our line and we realize we are completely helpless, He is the only one that can affect change. He is the only one that can bring help. He is the only one that can bring comfort and peace and joy. The psalmist again in 121 says, I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord the maker of heaven and earth. God, the living God, God, the maker of all things, God, the one who knows you personally, is your refuge, your help in times of difficulty. I'm leading to this point of helping us remember that through our desperate need and through the fact that God alone satisfies that, that He is the one we need to be passionate about. He is the one that we need to renew that excitement over. God is our provider and our provision. Always remember, though, the difference between need and want. Paul says in Philippians, My God will supply every need of yours according to His riches and glory in Christ Jesus. 
God is able and God is willing to provide for your needs. Not necessarily your wants, but your needs. There's something in in verse 2 that I want to point out because I believe the psalmist did this intentionally. He says, As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? Notice that he adds there, My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. We need to remember, I think he did that intentionally. I think that's important for us to remember. The God we follow, the one we worship, the one we serve is not some carved image, some lifeless form that merely works like some lucky charm to to make us feel better. The God we follow, worship, and serve is the living God. I heard a couple of amens. That should have gotten more. The God we follow and worship and serve is not some carved image, is not some made-up fairy tale. He is the living God. He is alive and well, and He knows you personally. He promises He will never leave us or forsake us. He is all we need. God is ever-present and satisfies our every need. So how do we renew our passion? As I said, over time, our original passion for Jesus can fade. Not overnight, maybe, but a a slow fade. Distractions come our way that, well, they distract. We, We make compromises and we allow distractions to creep in and slowly we move farther and farther from Jesus. And, and that original passion, that original excitement that we felt, it's easy for that to dissipate. We drift. We drift to places we never intended to go. And we look up. It's good to have times in, in, in our year that we reflect and we think because we look up and we realize this is not where I thought I was going to be at the beginning of a new year. This is not where I thought I was going to be at the end of this past year. It's easy to drift. It's easy to move away and to be pulled away. It's a reminder that all relationships take work. Our relationship with Jesus is no different. God gives us grace and mercy, but He expects us to do our part, to focus our attention on Him, to spend time with Him. We need to recultivate our original relationship. We need to make space in our schedule to spend time with Him. We need to create room in our hearts and our minds to hear from Him. It's a matter of priority, and sometimes we have a terrible, a terrible lack of priority or maybe better place better 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 stated is we do a terrible job of prioritizing things what is most important for us is our relationship with Jesus that's not always how we prioritize it sometimes and I'm this is confessional sometimes he gets what's left over At the end of the day, we fall into bed exhausted and we just pray, Jesus, help us. Now that's a start, but that is not making your relationship with him a priority. We need to make space and time. We need to pray for a renewed spirit, a rekindled passion. Psalm 51, I've shared with you before, verses 10 through 12 are, are probably some of the most dearest to me. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. That should be our prayer. God, renew me. Create in me that steadfast spirit, that renewed passion for you. We have a desperate need that only God can fill. And our part is to admit that we need Him and to allow Him to fill our passion. Paul tells Timothy something that I think is important for us to remember. In 2 Timothy 1, he says, For this reason I remind you to fan into flame 
the gift of God which is in you. Fan into flame. Have you ever sat around a campfire, maybe in your fireplace, although there's only about two days a year that we really need to have a fire in our fireplace in Corpus. But when that gets, the, the, the fire begins to, to die down, but you have those embers and you put a new piece of wood on and you can fan those coals back into flame. That's the image of what Paul says. You have that in you. It is not that, that you don't have the Spirit in you anymore. It is not that, that you have no longer have a relationship with Jesus. It's the fact that you've become removed from Him and distracted from Him and our passion fades and our, our, that flame dies down. And Paul says you need to fan that back into flame. May this be the year that we fan into flame that passion. Can you imagine what a church, what this family could do for the kingdom of God in Corpus Christi and in Texas and in our world if every family member was passionate about following Jesus every day? We need to fan into flame what God has placed within us that we have allowed to be ignored or at least to die down. Fan into flame what he has given us. Here's what I want you to remember from today. Uh, I, I know, I don't do this very often, but I know uh, preachers do this, and, and it can help you remember. So I have five R's for you. As we think about this idea of renewing our passion, of finding our first love, here's what I think will help us do this. And so you might want to write this down. The first R is realize as we think about 2020, as we look towards 2021, realize that maybe you aren't where you ought to be in your relationship with Christ. All of us, regardless of how close we are to Him, could be closer, could go deeper. So first, realize that you aren't maybe even where you once were. The second R is once you realize, repent. Repent. Repent for, from straying, for, for being distracted, allowing yourself to drift. The third R, remember. We realize that we aren't where we should be. We repent for straying and, and we remember what God has done for us this past year, what God has done for us in our lives. When we truly remember what He has done for us, when we reflect, the fourth R is reflect, when we think about what He has done and really allow that to, to sink in and think, as bad as 2020 was, it could have been so much worse. Had God not allowed me to, to, to move forward, has, if God had not given me His protection, His mercy, His grace, because really that's what it comes down to. It doesn't matter what happens to us physically or any other way because we have His grace and mercy. So if, if, it's the worst, if 2020 was the worst year you've ever experienced, it couldn't be bad enough that it would be bigger and worse than what His grace can cover. God gives us His grace. So we realize that we have strayed. We repent for straying. We remember what He has done for us and we reflect on the difference that His blessings have made and then we pray for His renewal. So realize, repent, remember, reflect, and renew. Renew your passion and desire to follow Him and please Him with your life. Pray for it. Work at it. As I said at the beginning, sometimes we have to get back to where we started in order to know how to move forward. May we get back to that original passion, that first love, so that in 2021 we live as passionate followers of Jesus Christ. My challenge for us this morning is this. Allow God's Spirit to rekindle the flames of your first love. May 2021 be a year of renewed passion to follow Jesus. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you for your word and the way that it reminds us, the way that it connects with us. As the psalmist shared, that just as the deer pants for water, we 
We pant for you. Our, our desire is to be closer to you, to know you, to be known by you. And so, Lord, I pray today that you would help us to make that a priority this year, that 2021 truly could be a year of renewed passion for you. I pray for a day that every family member in this church was so on fire for you, will be so on fire for you that our community will notice. They can't help but notice. If every church member, if every family member was committed to following you daily with all that we have, there is no way this community, our world would not take notice, not because of us, but because of what you are doing in the midst of your people. Help us to have that renewed passion. Help us to find that first love and then live into that every day this coming year. Jesus, it's in your name that we pray and for your glory that we pray. Amen.